Good morning, grandkids. Today I'm going to be reading chapters 12 and 13 of the book I'm writing, The Listener, based on my series, The Listener. Deep in the forest, the light from the moon slanted through the pines, laying down faint white stripes across the cobblestone road here and there. The somber hooting of an owl added to the eerie, mysterious mood of the night. Astrid had said the sanctuary door was well hidden off the side of the road, and I knew it was going to be hard to find. Maybe I should have searched in the daylight. I had my dagger out just in case of trouble while I prowled around through these trees. Once I dropped into a crouch, still and quiet, as a small patrol of Imperial soldiers passed by on the road. Eventually I saw a hollow a few feet down off the road, almost surrounded by a jumble of huge boulders. In the middle, a small pool of water had collected and pointed the way into an opening like a tiny cave in the massive rock. There, tucked at the back, was a door. The door was a slab of stone carved with a large, menacing skull. The eyes were sunken black pits. Its forehead cast a dull reddish glow with the black hand, symbol of the Brotherhood, painted on it. I walked up to it, hearing strange undercurrents of sound a hum or vibration-like. I must have tripped some mechanism because when I was right in front of it, a strange deep voice sounding like the stone itself spoke. What is the meaning of life? It said. I repeated what Astrid told me. Silence, my brother. The voice said, Welcome home. The door swung open and I entered into a narrow stone tunnel leading downwards. Reaching the bottom, I stepped into a small stone carved room. I realized the sanctuary was going to be a cave within this hillside and mountain. And there she was. Astrid stood across the room leaning against the doorway to a few stone steps going farther down. She just watched me as I stood looking around the room. There were bookshelves full of goodies and a stone table with a large map spread out on it. I suppose this was where she planned the logistics of any assassinations or pinpointed where each member was located at all times while out on assignments. Past the table was a room which I assumed was Astrid's bedroom. I finally crossed the room and walked up to her, announcing that I was accepting her invitation. Standing upright, not perched on a shelf, she had a tall, slender figure with a stern face. She was wearing some armor, which I coveted. She was friendly enough when she welcomed me to the family. Then she told me to go over to the bookshelves and take the set of armor waiting for me there and put it on before she took me to introduce me to the others. Wow, this was the very armor which I was coveting, plus a cowl, which I reckoned would serve me well when out on a job. I was thrilled and went into her bedroom to put it all on. When I came back out, I asked her if there were any rules around here that I should know about. But she said that all the rules had been dropped. Then she said, we live as we see fit. She then proceeded to tell me a strange tale. First, she said that soon the Night Mother would arrive. 
Who in the world was that, I wondered. Maybe Astrid wasn't the leader of this outfit. I asked her who the Night Mother was. Her cryptic answer left me still with no real answer and chilled. She had replied, The unholy matron, the shrouded lady, the mistress of the void. That sounded ominous. She then went on to tell me some story about Sithis and a woman and murder, a tale that Astra didn't seem to apply much truth to. I was assuming by her tone of voice that she didn't like this night mother and was not pleased that she was coming here, especially if it was someone that Astrid was going to have to pay allegiance to. How is this going to affect her authority, I wondered. It sounded there was intrigue going on here that I was going to enjoy watching. Maybe each of the other members had their own agenda, just as I had. This could get very interesting. I would not need to find my way through all the undertones, just as I had throughout my life. Stay low, key, watch and listen, give nothing away. Maybe Astrid had usurped her authority and should not have been in charge here. If so, that might make things easier for me to carry out my own plans. Astrid went on talking. Today, she is a skeleton, an ancient corpse. She's being brought here to this sanctuary by her keeper. She had gone on to say that contracts used to come from the Night Mother. She would hear the prayers of those who were performing the Black Sacrament, then pass it on to the listener, who would send out a speaker to arrange the contract. She said there hadn't been a listener in years. She, Astrid, now heard of desired contracts and took care of it. Wait, what? My ears had picked up on the listener for sure. Am I fulfilling some kind of destiny here? Was it meant to be for me to come here at this time? Also, something else started to make a connection in my brain. I was picturing that crazy jester I had met on a road with his dead mother in a cart, taking her to her new home. You've got to be kidding me. Was I the crazy one with the wild thoughts I was having? Was this all a coincidence? Or would that be too strange? What I was thinking couldn't be true, could it? At this point, Astrid had stopped talking and was watching me. I hoped she couldn't see the wheels turning in my head. Finally, she said that everyone was waiting to meet me. She said I should especially speak with Nazir, as he would have jobs for me while waiting for her to put together a contract for me to handle. I wondered if Nazir was her second in command. I was eager to meet the other members of the guild, and I and Astrid stepped into a surprisingly large cavern with a waterfall plunging into a pool at one side of the room. The other members were joking and laughing, seeming all gathered to meet me, as Astrid had said. I walked up to them and waited until they quieted down to introduce myself. While standing there, the first person I noticed was a child. Was she a captive? Maybe being held for ransom? Maybe even a sacrifice? What was going on here? But she seemed to be enjoying herself, teasing or maybe making fun of Arnjorn, who happened to be Astrid's husband, I soon found out. 
The others seemed to be enjoying his discomfort as he was verbally trying to defend himself. Finally, he stalked off in a huff, and they all turned to me. I introduced myself, and as Astrid was saying something about me, I walked straight over to the child and asked her name and if she was okay or in any danger here. She said her name was Babette, then started telling me a sad story about being kidnapped by this guild and was being held prisoner. When she saw the concern on my face, she started laughing and said she was just joking. I was not amused and walked away from her. I found out she was actually a 300-year-old vampire. She was an alchemist and was the trainer, buyer, and seller of such goods for the guild. An old cranky sounding man was nearby and had been enjoying her tale in my confusion. He said his name was Festus. He seemed to be the guild's wizard dealing in spells. He said that when he was young, he had been considered a prodigy in the use of spells until he burned down the family home. I had to laugh at that. Near the wall, I saw a huddled figure sitting on the floor. He was an Argonian and seemed to be more of a loner around here and very quiet and soft-spoken. He said his name was Vizera and that he had once been a shadow scale assassin in the Black March, but the order was now extinct. Being a trained killer, he had come here to the Brotherhood he hardly sounded the type. I noticed Arnjorn off in a small room repairing a piece of armor. He hardly spoke to me, yet I learned a few things. He was the guild smithy, took care of everyone's weapons and armor, that he loved Astrid, Astrid that he hated most people, and that he didn't like me and never would. I laughed out loud. I walked away knowing that I hadn't liked him when I first saw him and that I never would. Also I learned he was a werewolf. I finally turned my attention to Nazir. I had been checking him out of the corner of my eye. He was a red card with a narrow bearded, beaded beard and a marvelous voice, deep and husky. I found him very attractive. He had been standing there with his arms crossed, observing me this whole time. I walked over to him and he introduced himself and said that he was a master instructor in the use and care of light armor and that he helped Astrid in handing out contracts. At this point, I was facing a wide stairway leading to a higher level, which I thought might contain the bedrooms. Up there on the right wall near the waterfall was a beautiful stained glass round window, which seemed to glow. I wondered what room was behind it. To my left, a sudden movement in the dark shadows there startled me. Standing there, shrouded in a dark brown robe and cowl, was a woman I could hardly see. She stepped forward into the light and introduced herself. Her name was Gabriella. Beyond that, she didn't offer much, except that she liked to walk in the moonlight. She looked like a priestess, or maybe a mage, or a necromancer. I found out she had a frost spider named Liz as a familiar. Maybe she was a witch. I didn't know. The spider stayed in its own pit farther in the cave. It was friendly with the guild members and it was sort of the unofficial mascot. I went on up the stairway and found that my guess was right. 
It was divided in various sized bedrooms, and farther back there was a wooden stairway which went down to the dining hall. This contained a long dining table and chairs with a cooking area on one wall. Vizera was sitting at the table and I decided to check out the, this area at another time and leave him alone. I came back to the top of the main stairway, which was just a small rest area with a table and chair. I turned into the room behind the beautiful stained glass window and it seemed to glow from the, this side also. It had a bronze or gold looking skull as its centerpiece, which looked like the one on the stone door entrance to the sanctuary. It was flanked on either side by flags bearing the black hand symbol of the guild. In the back wall of the mainly empty room was an opening with a couple of stone stairs into a tunnel. This tunnel wound down and around until it opened out into the main room downstairs by the waterfall. Hmm, a private entrance, an empty room with a beautiful window. I wondered what or whom it could be for. I finally made my way back upstairs and sat down at the table with the single chair. I've been sitting here undisturbed, trying to bring my journal up to date, trying to remember everything I've seen and learned since first discovering the Sanctuary of the Dark Brotherhood, a very well hidden guild full of intrigue. And that's the end of those two chapters, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you with the next two chapters reading, the next time. Goodbye, grandkids.